We're here at Level Technologies and specifically Level Aviation. Level Aviation is the obvious part of the business that you know. There's another part that makes some very neat CNC machines. I call them desktop CNC machines. That'll be a story for another time. I'm Dan Johnson and I'm talking with Ananda Leon here. Uh, who is going to tell me about a new product that she has in her hands. But uh, before we get started, Ananda, give me a little bit of your background and what you do here at Level Technologies and Level Aviation. Oh, boy. Um, <laughs> what don't I do? Um, my background is in mechanical engineering, um, specifically materials engineering. I, I took a robotics class as an elective and I found out that it was really, really interesting. So I took more um, programming electives. Um, so I graduated as a mechanical engineering, but after college I started programming on my own. And when I started working here at Level, um, that's what I mainly did, just uh, programming. I was doing the, um, the calibration programs for the AHARS that my dad was developing. And then I transitioned into um, app um, apps for iPhone and then I transition into uh, embedded software so like microprocessors and all the software that goes into the avionics that we do now. When did that start? Uh, level aviation started when my dad moved from Venezuela to the United States in 2001. Um, we've been in aviation since I can remember. My dad has been flying uh, and building airplanes in the garage of the house for forever. Um, but the company started because he was, um, his, he had a, a Cozy, a twin Cozy. He put two uh, Suzuki engines on his Cozy and the airplane was really heavy and he needed a light uh, lightweight instruments. So he decided to do um, use a, a computer um, to show all the instrumentations because for the two engines he would have to have one instrument for each uh, and he didn't have the, the space or uh, the airplane was heavy by its you know with the two engines already um, so he decided he, to do his own EFIs to monitor the two engines and so this was a hobby he was doing um, avionics for his uh, cozy back home and um, a company saw what he was doing and they asked him to do um, an artificial horizon for them and that's when I graduated college I started working he was um, working on this for this other company and um, the iPad revolution was at the same time around 2011 2010 um, so while he was working on that um, we were doing, we were designing an AHARS, uh, Attitude and Heading Reference System, for the iPad. So we pioneered the first iPad compatible AHARS, and that revolutionized the way we use tablets in the cockpit because before it was just for navigation. Um, and then when we developed the AHARS, it was actually an e so You could use your, uh, your phone as a backup or as a primary if you had well, on the RV9 that we, uh, we were flying at the time, uh, that was our primary flight display. So um, everything started from there, from that AHARS, and then it developed into the eye level, and uh, now we're working on the bomb, and we have ADS-B in, ADS-B out solutions. And the eye level, what it is, is basically a avionics suite right everything in one box your your six pack instruments um, plus an ADS-B in plus the GPS everything in a little box with a Wi-Fi transmitter so you can access this information wirelessly um, on a tablet or an Android on a heads up display or whatever it just basically allows information to be broadcasted uh, about your instrumentation and and you could have I, I think I read call I recall that you can do 10 inst uh, 10 devices can 
be sourced by the same device, right? Yes. Uh, yeah, you can access inf wireless information. It's six devices um, wirelessly, and then you also have serial communication. I see. So, so you could have a co-pilot with you, and that individual could be looking at an iPad or uh, some other brand and get this information, as well as the pilot. And if you're flying an experimental or light sport, which most of our readers do, they could have it mounted in the panel. They could have multiples mounted in the panel or all kinds of things are possible with that. And we're going to this new system, FAA's Next Gen. And Next Gen, they are pushing everybody. Every aviator in America knows about ADSB and how you're supposed to be have out capability, and you need that by 2020. So everyone's aware of it now. Most people like me don't understand it as well as we might. Certainly not to develop products, but we do want to know where other airplanes are. And this device is going to help them. Is that about right? And and then tell me a little bit more about the ADSB. Yeah. Yeah, so ADS-B out um, is based on your uh, location, your position. Instead, uh, instead of using radar, uh, obviously the airplanes don't have a radar system built in. So ADS-B allows you to see other aircraft because you're um, transmitting your position. Basically, you have a um, GPS input to an ADS-B out, and the ADS-B out sends where you are, how high you are how fast you're going, who you are, to everybody around you. So you, you, don't need, um, you don't need a radar, you don't need a tower. You can see instantaneously where everybody is around you. So this little tiny device you have in your hand here, which by the way is, is more box and container for it than it is device. Very nice packaging and so forth, but the little, the little white piece that I see in there attaches to the airplane. Well, first of all, where does this, where would this attach on an airplane, Ananda? So the beacon is level aviation's take on ADS-B out. Our idea was to make it simple and make it affordable for pilots because it is mandatory. Um, and expensive. And expensive by 2020. Uh, sorry, mandatory by 2020. So this little fin mounts on the bottom on your, the bottom, okay. Yes, so it would actually go like this. Um, it's an antenna. Which way is the airplane flying? This the way? The airplane or? is flying this okay, way. Okay, <laughs> okay. So it's kind of like a reverse rudder fin or like a rudder fin hanging down, and that's where the send is happening. Mm, yes. Okay. Um, so we, ADSB, it's a little complicated in the sense that it has multiple components. You need a GPS, you need an antenna, you need the ADSB out, you need a pressure uh, system for your altitude, um, you need to know the transponder, squat code, all those things. So what we did is we put everything on the antenna. Since you have to install an antenna anyways we put all the electronics inside the antenna we put the gps inside the antenna the antenna is there <laughs> and we put a, a pressure source inside as well because the beacon is outside we have access to the static um, pressure uh, so there's, there's a little tiny pinhole down here the camera can't possibly see it but it's right about in the middle of that little rudder fin looking thing and that gets the static pressure yes so when you have a beacon as far as installation because you have the pressure source there you don't have to plumb anything into your system so that saves a lot of installation time um, the gps is inside um, so you don't have to wire anything into it um, how about the source of power for all this power there's a you have to bring a power and ground 12 or 24 volts into the beacon um, and there is a little LCD screen where you do all your configurations so you don't have to use um, a computer or download a software or anything you have it comes with its own interface so you put all your configurations like your call sign um, how big your airplane is and all those things that you do need to put in um, the interface comes with with the beacon and it's and it's right here That's you, you can't see it, but... So, as I understand it, Anana, the real magic of this thing in your hand here is that 
ADS-B out, as most people know today, involves some box, some component that goes inside the aircraft, which then has to go gather these various pieces of information from other components that are installed in the aircraft, however well those are working, take that information and send it out to an antenna somewhere mounted elsewhere on the airplane, all of which is why the installation of these ADS-B outs is a substantial portion of the cost in addition to the hardware you got to buy. By, by the beacon, you're kind of eliminating an awful lot of that. You got to bring power out to it, but nothing else. Is that right? And then it does its job once, of course, you put those data inputs in that you just mentioned. Is that right? That is right. That was the concept. Just trying to make everything easier for the pilot to install because you have, um, it, it reduces the ground time for your airplane. Uh, it reduces the amount of hours that you have to put in to put the, the, the ADSB out. And you don't have to upgrade your avionics. This works with what you already have, which is the key because when you're installing ADSB um, and you need a certified GPS, well, do you have a certified GPS? And if not, then you have to go and buy that. Uh, does it work with the transponder that you have already there? If not, then you have to upgrade your transponder. And so the cost and the time adds up. Um, so the beacon, what it allows you to do is just stay with what you have um, and still comply with the 2020 mandate. Okay, so this is a product that's timely now. People need it today because they've only got a couple of years left before they have to have, if not your device, they've got to have some series of devices, whatever it takes to do ADS-B out in order to be compliant or they can't fly in lots of airspace. You have a solution that's available now and how does it, I don't want specific details, but how does it price compare to those other component parts that people might buy? Um, so besides the saving on installation um, that the pilot is going to get, the Beacon is the most affordable ADS-B out solution in the market today. Um, it's $13.95 retail price um, and that includes the interface, the, uh, the ADS-B out solution. Um, the only thing it does not include is the GPS antenna. So if you already have a GPS antenna, you can use that um, or you can buy that accessory separate from us or any distributors. Okay, so there's a solution. I've heard numbers as high as $30,000. That's a little bit dated now, and I suppose that's for some very deluxe system of some kind. But even the low price systems have been twice that or more that I have heard. So here's a real savings opportunity for pilots in a small, light, attractive package. Uh, that can be installed relatively quickly and do everything they need to be fully FAA compliant with the ADSB out requirement mandate for 2020. Is that correct? That is correct. Um, just for experimentals and light sport. Understood, right. <laughs> uh, and there may be another product in the future, but we'll come back and talk to Ananda Leon about that later. Thank you so much, Ananda. Let's have the web address one more time where people can come and find out about this or just make their purchase or find out what distributors may have it and like that. And uh, uh, give me that web address again. Okay, it's aviation.level, L-E-V-I-L.com. Okay, very good. Thanks for coming with me to learn about this device, which I didn't know enough about myself. I'm better educated. I hope you are too, folks. Uh, again, my name is Dan Johnson, talking with Ananda Leon here at Level Aviation. Thanks for speaking with us today.